I would say a question that I want to ask you um, would be any insight into I've had um, quite a journey filled with a lot of pain, um, a lot of trauma, a lot of physical pain, and a lot of ailments of always feeling like I'm, I'm not well and wanting to thrive, wanting to live my best life. And I feel like I'm coming into that right now, but it's been just like, feels like a seven year, you know, like Uranus or one of the planets is just in my, in my sign, just pounding on everything. So I want to find meaning, you know, I believe that we're meaning givers, um, it helps me process and work through my experience as to, did I choose these experiences or trying to find meaning in the pain? Cause I found a lot of transformation and a lot of insight and a lot of knowledge gained, but more so like what part of my soul did I choose this? Is it, you know, contracts that I've had with certain souls or people, but it's been constant for the last five to seven years. Yeah. I mean, just to really, really uh, bring it full circle to what I was saying in the beginning with the context of our build today, it's really about that, that DNA chain. And what's happening here is it's great that this life, okay, so pain is payment, right? We talked about that and how there's a, this is a universe. So this is a university, there's a tuition, right? So there's actually a price that needs to be really paid in pain that is really the recompense for the lessons that are actually being taught and the beings that are actually teaching that lesson. That's what they demand, if you may, in order to mesh out that, that lesson, just like we've learned in life that our masters have sometimes been very distorted, meaning they've taught us something, but definitely not somebody we really want to jump in the class with again. So then what happens is, as I said, it's easy to ride the chain, meaning a person coming in and out of lives, especially if they come in a life and, the DNA has been already refined. Like many of us have actually inherited bodies where the DNA was very refined and may have even squandered that and didn't, what you would say is pay it forward, make sure that there is a check and balance system in the consciousness to how much I'm spending and you know how much I'm, how much I'm actually giving and how much I'm actually taking. And this is where we find ourselves at in these lives because we have our parents and our parents' parents and our parents' parents have that have come through a sequence of basically just riding into the DNA, utilizing it for what it's capable of doing, racking up a bunch of debt, and then passing off that to us. And so we used to have so many different ways to straighten that out. And that's what you know you would see a shaman really equipped with was just multiple ways to balance things out. And they had different ways that people wouldn't even understand of how to, to really clean that energy. But now we're our own shamans. And we, because we're sitting in the experience, have come up with ways to begin that process of refining it and cleaning it. And that is so that as we pass on to this, the, we're immortals already. Immort immortality is just a, is a reference to if you're conscious once you go on from this. And so there is like, so when you ask, okay, Hey, have I, have, did I ask for this? If there's a question there, that's where there's no, there's no consciousness. So meaning that I don't remember, you know, I get flashes or whatever, but I don't remember a past life. I don't remember where I agreed to this. So if, and I, and I had to go deep into this lesson, you know, to make this all clear, because this has a lot to do with other kind of mechanics and I sought for ways to, to try to explain those mechanics. And what it really came into was that at the end of this life, your mind, your body, and your soul, which are in a, a bind, they're binded together, they come to the end of their term. And they choose if they're going to continue to go on because the body is synthesized. It gets consumed inside of the ground and then turns into a gas. The soul gets synthesized, or what you would call the spirit. And then the, the, um, the mind or the memories, they start becoming synthesized. But these are different bodies. 
that's why they call it the holy marriage because the marriage is all those bodies are all those elements coming together. So what happens then is, is that if you can live your life to the completion where there is a contentment, like there's a, you don't feel like that your mind ended up getting the best of you or your body didn't do this right for you or, you know, your, your spirit wasn't because at the end of life, there's like a, let's balance out. Are we going to go on with this relationship or are we going to split apart? This is what's going on in those moments after death. If you can get your mind, your body and your soul synthesis to, which is something that can be accomplished in this life, to agree to move on, you go on with your memories and you go on with other things that we're not even really considering that we have. And this is important if we want to recall whatever happened, because if we move on and we decide to split, because that's what death is or die is to split, right? So if we choose to split at that point, then generally you separate from the actual substance, if you may, that contains your memories. So then there, there is no memory. And that is like literally saying, hey, I'm not going to re, I'm not going to re-engage you. Literally, I'm going to, to move on and move away. So this is why we work uh, this life to get to that point where even when we've gone through all this, these experiences to realize that if we move any of that out of the way, and some of those experiences are extremely traumatic, but if we move any of them, then we cannot be where we're at now. And so if we're not content with where we are at right now, then we're always digging through that, trying to move that around, trying to wish that never happened. And all that would do at the end of the term would be to say, I don't want to recall that. I don't want to, 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 to balance at all with that and to continue with that. But make no mistake, because some believe that when you die, you leave your body like a spirit and you go on. And this is because they're not, they, they're used to saying the mind, body, and the soul. And we, we do that in order to have like a, a conversation where we can actually have them in categories where we can speak on them separately. But on the depth level, we don't really separate them because nothing is really separate. So we then can come to the awareness, the body is synthesized into another thing when you die. And it now takes on its next manifold. And so do the rest, as I mentioned earlier. And if they can remain together, as I said, now they go forward with all the memories and conscious immortality, which is really what many beings are actually actually searching for once they uh, have gone through these cleansing processes and come into a greater understanding of the meaning of life. So that's what we have now, sister. And, you know, these, again, are signs letting us know our benchmarks and our milestones, where exactly we're at with this and as we keep increasing more there's a lot of energy and intention just being put into making sure that we also have beings that are around us that are making sure we stay refreshed in that way not really kind of you know we have beings that we're servicing all the time that need assistance these are the human beings that need assistance from us but also beings that are we're harmonized with and there's not anything really that's needed more than the common cycling of energy that keeps us all you know encouraged about this journey and this quest that we're on. So, you know, I trust that that, you know, makes, you know, some, that makes some sense for you, you know, and beyond that, we can always go into the heart space and that's where we all are at. So, yeah.